their midst. God is here in our midst. Can you sing that song solemnly? Then sing my song. Sing my song. My my Savior. So worship that great God. Thank you. 
What a privilege to come before you this mighty God. As we have come before you, show us your greatness. Do beyond our expectation. Do beyond our imagination. Visit us in a unique way. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Let's be seated in the presence of God. We want to really thank God for this great opportunity to be part of this convention 2023. Our annual convention of Beloved Bible Church. I want to thank God for the leadership of the church that's given me the privilege to stand before us this evening to take the opening message. And I pray that the mighty God that is in our midst will reveal himself to us more in Jesus' name. Every one of us that are here will not go by the same in Jesus' name. You know, one thing that I just that came to my mind. If God is here physically, how will you feel? It's not just a team. But God wants to remind us that he's always in our midst. Matthew 18 20 says, Where two or more are gathered together in my name. There I am in their midst. And tonight we are more than two. So God is in our midst. And that God that is in our midst wants to tell us what he can do. He just wants to remind us. It's a reminder of who this our God is. So many things are happening in the world today that a lot of people don't believe that God exists again. That a lot of people don't believe that God is still doing mighty things. That a lot of people don't believe that we have a God that is powerful. So what God wants to remind us in this convention is to bring us back about who he is. And what he can do. I pray that the God that is in our midst... We reveal himself to us as we gather in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to go to that, our text. Sephaniah chapter 3. I will read from here. Sephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. I think I will take it from maybe 15. Okay, let me take it from 18 and 16. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Some things were happening. And there was a reminder. Look at, I believe there was fear, there was some challenges going on. And he said, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord, your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. No matter what you are going through, I want you to know that the Lord your God will save you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, do not be weak. Do not be afraid. Now, what does it mean, that word mighty? That word mighty. Because when we have an understanding, I don't know why Sephaniah was trying to remind them so that they will have confidence in that God that he can do something for them. What does it mean to be mighty? What is that word mighty? Mighty means possessing great power and strength. Showing 
or having great power. That's the first thing. So he was trying to tell them. That was why he started by saying, don't be afraid. Don't let your hands be weak. The person beside you, the God that you are serving, is a God that has power. He has great power. And he can do great things. He's showing great power. He can do mighty things, which we are going to see as we go on on this uh, church this evening. He has great power. So the first thing I want you to know is that God has great power. He has all the power in the world. And then the mighty again. He has a great size. God has a great size or great extent. When they say something is mighty, the thing that has great size. And this scripture came to mind. Isaiah 66. To prove that God has great size. Isaiah 66. Verse 1 and 2. God says the Lord. Heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Where is that house that you will build me? And where is that place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made. And all those things exist, says the Lord. Now, I want you to imagine tonight. Maybe the reason why we don't know that this God is mighty is that we have never imagined the size of God. How many of us can see heaven? <laughs> and the Bible says, He made heaven his throne. And the earth is his supposed to. What kind of leg will he have? Somebody sitting on the throne and his leg is touching the ground. What kind of hand? No wonder his hand can reach anywhere. No wonder his leg can get anywhere. No wonder his eyes can see the whole world. He is a God that is mighty in size. That's one of the proof that is a mighty God. They say that God is mighty. And because he's mighty, his arm can reach anywhere to save or deliver. He said he can save. Anywhere, all over the world, the hands of God can reach there. So, it shows that he is a great God. So, the God that we have, that is in our midst, when you say somebody is in your midst, that word means, that means the God that is with you. The goal that is, is the central of you. That word means me central. The goal that can see everything that is happening around your life. The goal that knows everything that is happening around your life. He said, the goal that is in the midst of your life. The goal that is in the midst of the church. The goal that is in the midst of your situation. There is no aspect of your life. There is no aspect of your situation that he cannot see. He's not just on one part. He's in the midst. He's with you. He's going through with it with you. He said, when you pass through water, I will be with you. The God that is with you. So when you have this understanding that that God is in the midst of you, it's not far from you. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our ever-present help. It can only be your help when it's beside you. He is in the midst of you. He's beside you. The ever-present help in trouble. And the question you will ask yourself, why am I not experiencing his power? Remember Gideon when the angel came to him. He said, Thou mighty man of valor. And he talked to the angel in the book of Judges. He said, How am I mighty? Eh? I cannot see the God. You are just saying I'm mighty. I cannot experience it. Do you know where God is bringing us to? 
Not only does he want us to know that it's with us, he wants us to begin to experience it. That God that is mighty can do mighty things in your life. He can do mighty things. This mighty God, his power is unlimited. He has power to control all things. God has power to control all things. And the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and his name shall be wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. God that can control all things. That is the God that you have beside you. And that is the understanding that God wants us to have in this convention. The God that is doing mighty things. That is the central of your life. So, the first thing we want to look at, what God does that shows his mighty power. Let me tell you something. It is not a title. When they say somebody is mighty, it's by manifestation. People are called mighty by the reason of what they are doing. People are called great by manifesting greatness. So when the when Sephaniah was telling them that the God that is with you is mighty, he wants them to know that there are some great things. We will not be able to enumerate her tonight. But I will just show some of it to tell you that, to give you that assurance, to give you that confidence that that God with you is not anyhow God. I remember one servant of God, the God's general, that had this understanding. Whenever he is going to minister in a crusade, he loves singing this song. I have a very big God oh, who is always by my side. A very big God oh, by my side, by my side. And the moment he starts singing that song, miracles begin to take place. Do you know what he's saying? I have a God that is mighty. Show your might. Until you acknowledge that God is mighty, you cannot express that power. I have a very big God. Number one, what God does that show is mighty. He is the creator of all things. Psalm 24. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and his fullness. The world and those who dwell in it for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters somebody that owns the whole world the owner of the world he said the lord is the earth is the lord and his fullness everything in it what a mighty god when you see those men that have so many properties one of the evidence that somebody is mighty or rich is by the size of the property is that also, sir? Is that also when you want to say that somebody is rich? In fact, they will say the net worth, what the person worth. We want to talk about greatness. We hear the greatest man in the world, the greatest man in the world. What do they use to measure by what they have? And the Bible is not telling us, and we call those people mighty and great. The Bible is not telling us that the Lord that is in our midst. He is the creator. The Lord is the world and the fullness thereof. And everybody that is there. What a mighty God. Can you tell somebody beside you, the mighty God is beside you. What a mighty God. The creator. The owner. Everything in the world belongs to him. And that is one of the evidence that is a mighty God. Everything cattle upon the thousand hills, silver and gold, everything on the surface of the earth belongs to this God, and that is the evidence that is a mighty God. The first evidence by creation, by being the owner of the all things that we have, and 
because of that he can give us all things not only is he the creator of all things he also rules over all the earths he rules over all the earths he's the ruler the god that rules in the affairs of men he is in heaven and is ruling on the surface of the earth remember what he did about nebuchadnezzar when nebuchadnezzar in the book of god and misbehave he shows that he rule he turned into an animal what a great god controller of heaven controller of the earth controller of everything that he has created psalm 95 says something verse 3 to 5 for the lord is the great god and the great king above all gods in his heart at the deep places of the earth the height of the hills are his also the sea is his for he made it and his hands from the dry land and verse say, oh come let us worship and bow down because of his greatness he created all things and he also controls all things number two what god does that shows his mighty power he parted the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14. God parted the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14. From verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he accomplished for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand. God gave him a command over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong wind all that night. And made the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on a dry ground. And the waters were a wall to them on the right hand and on the left. The Lord parted the Red Sea. And do you know today, no matter the challenge on your way, God can also make a way for you. He parted it. That's to show his greatness. He told Moses to stretch out his hand. And the Lord caused by strong wind all the night, he made the water to be divided. And the children of Israel, anytime I read it, they walk in the midst of the sea on a dry ground. What a mighty God. The mighty God displayed wonder. What a wonder. He parted the Red Sea, showing that he's a mighty God. Number three, he is a man of war. Second Chronicles chapter 20. He was the one that gave Jehoshaphat victory. Second Chronicles chapter 20. This mighty God showed his power by fighting the three nations that came against Jehoshaphat. It was not Jehoshaphat. He fought, he made them to fight against themselves. And he granted Jehoshaphat victory. Verse 17 of it. Jehoshaphat called upon him. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be a dismay. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. And the Bible says when they went out. They were just singing. The Bible says that God inhabits the presence of his people. God came down. The mighty God came down. And he made the enemy to begin to fight against themselves. The mighty God will rise for you today. And every enemy of your life, they will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. He made them. Those enemies, three nations, powerful nations. He rose as a man of war. He said, you don't need to fight in this battle. And God is still doing the same thing. He saved him from the three kings. He said, the Lord will save. How did he save him? He made the enemies to destroy themselves. That is one of the mighty power of God. Number five. 
he provided miraculous food. He's still doing it today. John chapter 6. God provided miraculous food, showing his mighty power. They were in the wilderness and they did not know what to eat. And Jesus, with the little, he was able to break the bread and the fishes. And a lot of people ate. Verse 4. Now the Passover feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted his eyes and seen a great multitude coming to him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may have a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make them to sit down. And there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, see, five loaves and two fishes, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples, to those sitting down, and likewise the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore, of the five body loaves were left over by those who had eaten, he filled he, he fed the multitude with just five loaves and two fishes. Divine provision, divine multiplication, miraculous feeding. And that mighty God is the one beside you. The one that swallowed us lack. The one that provided beyond measure. Just using five loaves and two fishes, he was able to feed them. And that mighty God is still able to feed you today. He's still able to provide for you today. He provided miraculous food. The last one, he paid debts miraculously. The wife of the sons of the prophets was in debt in 2 Kings chapter 4. And he went to Elisha. And Elisha told her, what do you have? I want us to look at that account. It wasn't about giving money. The little oil that this woman has in the house, the mighty God multiplied it. The little oil that was in her house, the God of multiplication multiplied it. And she was able to have enough to sell, to settle to debt, and to start business. Just a little oil. He said, go and guide that vessel, not a few. Lock yourself inside. And the power of the mighty God came upon that oil. And that little oil filled so many containers that the woman that was a debtor became a oil seller. That is what the mighty God can do. He paid our debts. Are you in debt today? Are you owing today? This mighty God will arise and settle your debt. Are you in lack today? This mighty God that is beside you will arise and meet your need. How do you now enjoy this mighty God? What are the keys to experience the mighty God? It's with us. And some of you will be asking, why am I not experiencing it? I'm telling you that mighty God is beside you, even now. And the reason why he's coming to us in this convention is that in this time, we may begin to experience his mighty power. His wonders. Begin to experience the supernatural. The mighty God operates in the realm of the supernatural. Anybody that acknowledges the 
almighty God will experience and operate in the supernatural. So you need to know. It's not enough to say, I am in your midst. It's to experience this power. That is my own heart cry. That when people see me, they will say, of a truth, God is with you. God is in your midst. What are the keys to experience this mighty God? Number one, acknowledge his presence with you always. I want you to tell three people, God, the mighty God is with me. Can you tell somebody else again, the mighty God is with me. Do you know that as you are announcing it, you are telling yourself, I know he's with me. The mighty God is with me. So you must acknowledge it. Acknowledge his presence. Hebrews 11 says, verse 6 says, they that must come to God must believe that he exists. And he's a rewarder of them that are diligently seeking. How many of you know the, this God is with you? Joseph, when Potiphar's wife wanted to tempt him, he said, how can I sin against this? How can I do this wickedness and sin against this God? He was conscious. You want to experience the power of the mighty God? Be conscious. Acknowledge him. This mighty God is beside me. He's, in me. He's with me. He's with me. He's present with me. And you now begin to live in consciousness to please him. Do you know that when you are living in consciousness to please God, you will not commit sin. You will not do wickedness because you know God is seeing you. That was what they, Joseph, uh, Joseph did. He said, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? So you must live in that consciousness as for today. It's beside me. You are walking on the street. You are going to your place of business. You need to carry that consciousness. I have a very big God who is always by my side. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. The road and the staff, they comfort me. Acknowledging the mighty God gives you boldness wherever you are. It gives you victory. It makes you an overcomer. It makes you to walk over every situation of life. Because you know that somebody is a pillar. He has a, you have a backing. You are not walking alone. Acknowledge him. When you acknowledge him, he will make himself known to you. Number two, make God your source of all that you need for life and godliness. Psalm 23, David said, The Lord is my shepherd. What is he saying? The mighty God is my soul. He said, I shall know one. You want to experience the power of the mighty God in your midst, then let him take over. Some of us will quote that Psalm 23, but how many of us are living Psalm 23? That Psalm 23 was David's testimony about God. He said, The Lord Almighty is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the sea water. He restored my soul. He leaded me in part of righteousness. For his name say, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. The road and the staff, they comfort me. Then he now went further. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Because he knew that God was with him. He was not afraid of the enemy. He was not afraid to break through in the presence of the enemy. He knew that his breakthrough, the enemy cannot tamper with it. He knew that his success, the enemy cannot tamper with it because the, mag, the mighty God is there. He said, you prepare us a table before me in the presence of my enemy and the enemy cannot touch it because God is there to protect, to preserve. So you must make him your source. Let him take charge of your life. And he will begin to show forth his mightiness. David, may God 
the mighty God is so anyone's experience is that I shall don't want. Uh -uh. I can never lack. I have all I need. I know that passion says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. If God can carry the weight of the whole world, what are you that God cannot provide for you? I have. That's the confidence that David had in the Lord. He make him God is provider. Relying on God to meet his needs. You want to experience the power of the able God, then you need to rely on him. You need to allow him to take charge us from today. You need to allow him to take his place in your life. You need to allow him to take control. That's where you, be, you begin to enjoy him. He's the one in charge. He's in your midst. But you are not enjoying him because you have not allowed him. But after tonight, as you are lying, you will experience him. I say you will experience him. In every dimension of your life. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Acknowledging God in all you do. Proverbs 3, 5. Verse 5 to 6 says, Trust for your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Do you know you need to do that? I want to go out, God. I am going out today. Lead me. You want to do business, mighty God. I want to go and do this business. Lead me. And the mighty God will now begin to tell you His plan. God's ways are not your ways. When you acknowledge Him, He's the one that knows the way to success. He said, I am the one that teaches you to profit. You don't know how to profit. But when you acknowledge him, the mighty God will show you part of success. You will walk like an elephant. You will eat. You will, you will walk like an ant. You will eat like an elephant. You will be eating targets. He will be showing you what to do part time. When you acknowledge him, he will teach you Grant you divine strategy. He is the one that knows the strategy for success. Why you are still struggling is because you did not allow the mighty God. If you allow the mighty God, you will bring forth with ease. When David allowed the mighty God to use the catapult, he hit targets. He hit the head of Goliath. It was not the hand of David. David was just a small boy. But he had handed over. He said, you come to me in the name of your God. I come to you in the name of the Almighty, the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts held the hands of David. And the head of hosts drew the catapult and he hit the head of Goliath and Goliath. After, after today, you begin to make progress. You, God, the mighty God cannot be with you and you'll be a failure. He said, he's going to save. He will rejoice over you. He will make joy over you. Rejoice over you that you are succeeding. You are excelling. You are doing well. How can the mighty God be with you? And you will be suffering. The God in you is mighty. To do mighty things. So you need to pray about everything. Actually you go pray about everything. What are you doing? Partnering with the mighty God. Anytime you are praying with, about everything, you are saying, mighty God, take over. You are casting that thing into the hands of the mighty God. When our guy cast Ishmael in Genesis chapter 21 into the hand of the mighty God, Abraham, the father of our guy, gave them a bottle. But when God took over the mighty God, he gave them a well. He opened their eyes to see the well. Abraham gave them a bottle. But the mighty God gave them there, then Ishmael married, Ishmael flourished. He said today, the mighty God provides more than enough. When you acknowledge him by prayer, he will give you sufficiency. Our sufficiency is of the Lord. Number four, deliberately cast your case. That's praying. Now, number five, total obedience to every of God's instruction. The mighty God will always give you instruction. And most of the time, the instruction of this mighty God is always foolish. Look at what he told the woman. Elisha told her, 
came the wife of the sons of the prophet. The devils have come. They want to carry the devils have come. They want to carry my children. And Elijah said, What do you have? Elisha said, What do you have? I'm sure the woman was expecting Elisha to go inside and bring money and say, How much is it? Let me give you. Elisha said, What do you have? And the woman said, ah, I don't have anything. I just have one small bottle of oil. Have you not noticed that most of the time the key to your miracle is by your side? And until God opens your eyes, you will not see it. That little thing that you think is little is the key. But the mighty God opened her eyes. That small oil, he said, Go and carry that container, not a few. Lock the door so that there will not be distraction. So that people will not be asking, What are you doing? And he began to show his mightiness. I can one small oil container. That tiny one, like this, um, this small olive oil. Feel, let me use this drum as saw the container. And she keeps pouring. Is that not the power of the mighty God? And she keeps, as long as there is a container, there is, the oil was flowing. Just a small boat. The mighty power of this mighty God is a multiplication power. The oil was just multiplying. And the woman filled. The oil did not stop flowing until there was no container. If this woman had gathered your container in Nigeria, she would have had oil. So look at, look at, she did not go and ask her. After today, that divine instruction that will take you to your next level, God will release it to you. You just need one instruction. Just take one step. That's all you need. And you will see things begin to turn around. The mighty God is there. We just show you the way. Very simple. But the key to enjoy this mighty God is to make up our mind to be obedient. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. He said, my ways are not your ways. Neither my thoughts your thoughts. He said, as far as the heaven is from the earth, so my ways are far from your ways. You cannot, you, you cannot begin to walk in your way and enjoy the power of the mighty God. You have to walk in his way. And that way is by obedience. If you want to walk with the, you want to enjoy his power, you must be ready to obey. Whatever he tells you to do, do. Then, it is in obedience that the power of the mighty God is released. It is in obedience. Now, quickly as we pray. Benefit of this mighty God in our midst. What is the benefit? When you have this mighty God in your midst, what is the benefit? Number one benefit, divine intervention. Divine intervention. God be actively be involved in your affairs or bring a change. The mighty God cannot be with you and your life will remain the same. Whatever situation you are going through, it will, it, it will be involved, actively involved. It will bring solution. Divine intervention. Granting you victory. Experiencing divine provision beyond measure. That's number two. Divine intervention. Number one. Experiencing divine provision beyond measure. When the mighty God is with you, you begin to experience mighty provision. <laughs> ah, he will begin, he will go and meet people and collect from them and give you. He did not do it for Elijah. He told Elijah, go and stay at the book of chariots. And he, he went to meet Raphael of day, give him food. When the food finished, he said, go to Salafat. And he commanded the widow of Salafat again to give him food. Divine provision. He's still in the business of doing that. Number three, divine protection. He that keepeth Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. If you have the mighty God with you, he's your keeper. He will save, he will protect, he will preserve. That same means he is protecting you. He will preserve you. You will experience divine protection. The God will be a wall of protection around you. 
Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. And glory in your midst. He said, I will be a wall of fire around you. Hey. And the glory in your midst. It preserves you from danger. When the three boys were thrown into the fire, the mighty God was there to protect them. And the fire could not consume them. Number four. The benefit of the mighty God in your midst. It removes reproach and shame. John chapter 2. Jesus was in Cana in Galilee in a wedding. And the wine got finished. And the mother of Jesus noticed immediately that there was no wine. And he beckoned on Jesus. You can imagine you are in a wedding reception and there is no wine. People will be making mockery. Ha, if they have more, if they don't, if they know that they don't have money, why are they doing elaborate wedding? Why are they embarrassing themselves? And Jesus mother said, Look, there is no way. Even though it was not his time. But do you know that because the mighty man was in the midst of that wedding, the best wine came out. He turned water to wine. So the extent that the when the master of the ceremony said, Where did you keep this best wine? Why are you just bringing it? Instead of reproach, he turned to testimony. After today, your reproach will turn to testimony. Amen. That shame, that thing that is bringing shame, the, Lord, the Lord, the mighty God will turn into glory. He remove reproach and shame. Number five. When you have the mighty God, the benefits, you will never be stranded in the journey of life. He will always make a way for you. You will never be stranded. He's a way maker. He make it a way. In the wilderness, that Exodus 14 that we read, everywhere the, the children of Israel were, when they were going on the journey, he kept making a way. When there was no water, he brought water from the rock. He never allowed them to be stranded. He's the way maker. He's even the way. He's the way, the truth and the life. So when the mighty God is with you, you can never be stranded. And lastly, when the mighty God is, you will always enjoy the ministry of destiny helpers. He's our helper. He will always raise helper for you. It's not you they are helping. The mighty God will propel them to help. That's why you hear somebody say, and I saw your face, and God said I should go and bless you. And I saw your face, and God said I should release provision. Who is doing it? The helper. He will raise destiny helper. If the mighty God is with you, and you make him, you are conscious of him. You are relating with him. You are allowing him to take charge. He turns around your life. How many of you are saying today, I want to begin to experience this mighty God? He's with you. But from today, I want to walk with him. I want to experience him. That has been my cry since we started praying. I say, God, you are mighty in my midst. I want to begin to see your mighty power. I want to begin to see your greatness. I don't want to say I have a, I am serving a God of miracle. I want to experience the miracle. I want you to begin to show that your wonders, your miracle. If you have done it before in the Bible, then you can do it in my life. Everything that God has done before, that's why we have the record. He can do it again. There is no situation you are going through today. It has happened before in the Bible. And the mighty God made a way. And now, in your day, he's ready to make a way. He's just telling you, I am also able to say, I saved them there. I can save you. Shall we rise up on our feet? Are you here tonight? You're saying yes. I want more of this mighty God in my life as from today. I want to experience him more. I want to experience him more in every area of my life. Are you saying that tonight? Are you joining me to say more of this mighty God? If God is in my midst, 
this mighty God in my midst. Show yourself. Is somebody saying there tonight? You are the mighty man in battle. Ah, you are the mighty man in battle. I want you to tell him. You are the mighty man in battle. El Shaddai. You are the mighty man in battle. Hey, glory to your name. You are the one who give us victory. Oh, hey. Hey. Ah. you are the one who give us victory. Can you lift your hands up to that mighty man God? You are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. Why don't you tell him tonight that Father acknowledge you as a mighty man? Show yourself in my life. Can you just talk to him tonight? I acknowledge you tonight. You are the mighty God. Show your mighty power in my life. Where do you want God to show his power? He is going to show it tonight. Where do you want God to show his power? Is it in your acts? Is it in your business? Is it in your life? Raise up your voice and tell him. Say, Father. Can I hear you say, Lord, say, Father, you are my mighty God. Show your mightiness in my life. Can you turn it to prayer in the name of Jesus? You are the mighty God. Show your mightiness in my life. You are the mighty God. Maragado Shakalaba. Grant me the bad intervention. Make a way for me. Do the unusual in my life. I want you to tell him anything you want him to do, he's able to do. He's able to do tonight. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Arise for me tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. God wants to arise for somebody. I hear God, I will arise for you. Can you lift up your hands? You want the mighty God to arise tonight. You want to be the next person to share testimony. That in my situation, the mighty God arose for me. Can you raise your hands? I want you to arise for me. Please, if you are raising your hand, raise it very well. If you are raising it, raise it to him very well. I'm not going to tell you to come up and raise it wherever you are. He's seeing you. Which area of your life do you want him to arise tonight? Which area of your life? Anytime you are raising it, turn the situation to testimony. I want to arise for somebody tonight. That you are here. God wants to make you to know that he's a mighty God. If you are raising your hand, raise your voice. You are not raising it to any man, you are raising it to him. Malaka to Rekase Kerekasa. It's not just a team. Arise for me today, my mighty God. Ah! Ibaraka Toli Nama. Isaka Toli. The area where you want to aim to arise for you. Arise for me. I'm telling you, you're going to share testimony. Arise for me. The mighty God in our midst wants to prove himself. Parade Malona Katekara is the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. He is the healer. 
He is the deliverer. He is the savior. Thank you, Father. As you are rising, please raise your hand. He's arising for you to give you victory. He's arising for you to give you victory. My Lakatera Santa Raba. Thank you for the victory. When you are rising, there is victory. He's arising to give you victory. Hey, Paranta Yaba. He's arising to change that situation. To give you testimony. Thank you. Thank you as you are raised to that. I'm going to testify that our prophet truth. You are the mighty God in my midst. As you change my story. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory. Yes, Lord. Ah. Thank you. I see him rising. Because you said I am mighty in your midst. I will show my greatness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There's an instruction. You want God to show forth for you. You want Him to come through for you. Can you come to the front? You want the mighty God to come through for you in any area of your life. As you step out, can you raise your hand? Maybe this convention is for you. Ah, maybe it is because of you. I've been looking at your situation and I want to arise as a mighty God for you. Please, if you are raising your hand in His presence, just talk to Him. Ah, Amen. Come true for me. I'm hearing that song for somebody. Amazing, amazing God, amazing God, amazing God. You always come true for me. Amazing. Lift up your hands. God is 